Instax cameras are cheap, and they're even cheaper if you buy them secondhand. I've bought most of my Instax cameras used, and I've owned or tested almost all the Fujifilm cameras in the market today. That's why in this video, I'm gonna share how to test a used Instax camera without film, so you'll know if it's working or not before you buy it. Before we begin, make sure you have brand new batteries for the camera that you're buying. For the cheaper Instax cameras, it's usually 2 or 4 AA alkaline batteries, and for the more expensive ones, it's usually 2 CR2 batteries. If you can, bring along a used film pack and some exposed photos. This will be very useful when we test the camera later. First thing that we'll do is that we need to check out the whole camera. Look around the camera, look for any obvious signs of damage, missing parts such as covers, and also check if the camera has the included accessories like the close-up lens for the Mini 9 and the White 300. If there's no obvious signs of damage or moisture or something that shouldn't be there, we can go ahead and check the battery compartment. Check the battery cover and open and close it. Make sure that it locks completely and there's no broken tabs. Look at the battery compartment and check the contacts. Make sure it's clean and there is no residue. Here's what a dirty or corroded battery compartment looks like. Check for any broken wires or contacts. If the battery compartment looks physically okay, we'll go ahead and load the batteries. Load the batteries properly, note the correct order and polarity of the batteries, especially on the AA cameras. Once the batteries are loaded, power up the camera and wait for a few seconds for the camera to start and charge the flash. This might take a few seconds. But once it's powered up, we'll take a picture. So go ahead and see if the camera takes a picture. Make sure that the flash fires. It's important that the camera's flash fires because it's not very easy to fix. Now we're also going to check if the camera cycles correctly. Open the back and take a second picture and see if the ejection claw is moving. It's the silver part that pushes the film up and outside the camera. Now once the camera cycles correctly through that, we're going to go and try out a loading and ejection test. First. Check the camera and check the film door, open and close it, and see if it opens and closes correctly. On some cameras, the film door or the tabs on the door get damaged and it won't close correctly. On some of the older camera models, there should be a spike or a tab that pushes a switch inside the camera. Make sure it's not broken off. Once you check the door, go ahead and load the film in the camera. Take note that there's only one way to load an Instax camera. Just match the yellow mark on the camera with a yellow mark on the film pack. Now, go ahead and load the film pack, close the door, and take another picture. The camera should take a picture and eject the film properly. It should push out the film without any problems. Try it several times just to make sure that the camera works correctly. Also check if the rollers are clean and there's no gap. Also check the film counter. It should count down when you're using the camera and the counter should also reset to the letter S when you open the back. Once we've tested the ejection, we'll now move on and see if the sensors and the viewfinder is okay. Go ahead and look through the viewfinder and check if it's clear and it's not cloudy. If the viewfinder is okay, go ahead and check the sensors. Make sure that they're clean and they're not dirty or blocked because if they're blocked or dirty, your camera won't expose them correctly. Once you're done with that, we're going to check the lens and the shutter of the camera. First, check if the lens extends and opens the lens cover. On some cameras, the lens cover gets stuck and it might need some work. Check if the lens extends properly and there's no weird grinding noises. For the single digit cameras, the 7, 8, and 9, check the lens settings. If they change, if you click on the settings rings, they should change their size and they should be aligned and not like this. This one is broken and misaligned. Also check if the shutter opens and closes. With the back open, point the lens at a bright subject like the sky or a light and see if it opens while you take a picture. For the cameras with slow shutters, such as the Mini 11 and the Mini 40, take a picture while covering the light sensors and see if the shutter stays open for a longer time. It should be open for about one half of a second. 
The last thing that we will test is the camera's electronics, controls, and other functions. We'll be testing the buttons, the focusing modes, and the other bells and whistles of the camera just to make sure that everything is working. Make sure there are no blinking lights or error codes on the LCD. Each Fujifilm model has specific buttons, so you need to refer to the manual for the specifics. Fujifilm has manuals for most of their cameras available online on their website. In general, we just want to test if each button is doing what it's supposed to do, so test them out. Test the focusing modes and see if the camera lens moves accordingly. For the other buttons, refer to your camera's manual. Once the buttons and controls test out okay, you should be good and the camera should be in good working order. Take note, however, that there are some problems that can only be diagnosed by shooting film. So it's still advisable to test out your camera with real film if you can. So that's it for this guide. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.